All right, guys, I had a very easy week planned for myself, but guess what happens when you plan those easy weeks? Yeah, nothing goes right. So yesterday, a walk-in cooler, it has two condensing units, two evaporators, one is a backup. All right, the backup is short of gas because it won't come on when you try to force it to come on as a backup. That's not good because it has expensive uh, materials in this cooler. So we have to fix it. The other, I get here this morning and there's oil dripping from the condensing unit. I get my ladder, go up, it's about eight feet off the floor. The plate that holds the oil in place on the bottom of the semi-hermetic compressor, the gasket's been compromised because we got all kinds of oil leaking out the bottom of that plate. Now, the oil sight glass, a little round sight glass, we can't see any level whatsoever. That's not good, so I had to shut it off. So we have two walk-in coolers with a very expensive product running without a backup right now so my priority has to shift from pms to fixing these machines all right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to leak check the system that's short of gas first because i have to order a gasket for the other machine but that gives me a chance to show you guys how i leak check and how i think that we should all be leak checking um, because we don't need to blast everything with soap and make a mess what i do is i use the electronic leak detector and then i find where the leak area is and then I use some soap to verify the area and pinpoint it from there. So let's get to it guys, leak checking a walk-in cooler condensing unit. Alright so rule number one when we're leak checking uh, an evaporator such as this, we want to kill the power. We do not want airflow running across that coil while we have that leak detector going because it could take that refrigerant and blow it away from the test area. So get that power kill to those fans first. So the last thing you're gonna to wanna to do is cover this entire area with soap. Then you just gotta clean it all up after. So if you take the electronic leak detector at it, find the general area of the leak that you can use soap afterwards to kind of pinpoint it. Now I have the, uh, the Testo 316-3 fired up here and I'm getting some some readings around the TX valve. Right in this area over here, picking up some readings. Okay, I've already done the entire coil here and I'm picking up nothing, or the end bends and, and all the piping in this side. The only place I'm picking up any readings is right around here. So we're going to soap that area and see what we can find. All right, before you get the big blue out, start soaking the area. Just know one thing here. You need to wait a good 10, 15 minutes if it's a slow leak and wait for those bubbles to show up. Don't spray it. Two minutes later, nothing happens. You walk away from it. You need to let that soap penetrate in to that leak to start generating those micro bubbles if it's a slow leak. If it's a bigger leak, obviously those bubbles will appear a lot faster. So if it's a slow leak, guys, wait that 10, 50 minutes, it's well worth it. Alright guys, forgive my uh, cracked mirror there, but seeing behind that flare, flare nut, we have some bubble accumulation. Now that took about 20 minutes to accumulate back there. It's a very, very slow leak. There's only about 30 PSI in the system. So the leak rate is very, very low. Uh, so that is where the leak is. So we're going to have to fix that up, recharge the system. But that is why we don't soap everything, because now we'd have to clean everything up, right? Use the electronic leak detector, find the leak area, and then pinpoint it with soap. And then you only have a small area to clean up afterwards. All right, guys, so listen, I found the leak on that one, but I went up to the condensing unit and I also leak checked there. And what I found was... The king valve, okay, when I took the cap off, it was very, very tight. I could tell there was pressure behind it. Once I got it half off, I soaped it. 
and I started getting bubbles out of there. Now I pulled the cap off and it's one of those types of uh, service valves that don't have the packing on it. So I'd have to really get a new one and replace it. Uh, the unit is really old, so we might look at replacing the entire unit. But for now, what I did was I just put some nylog around the threads and I, uh, I tightened it up and that got rid of the bubbles. So my point here is just because you find one leak, you don't stop leak checking the entire system because there could be one, two, three, there could be multiple leaks on that system. So guys, when you enter, if you have airflow, you got to shut it down. All right, use a trusted electronic leak detector to find the leaks, use soap to verify, all right, and when you verified one leak, continue on to find more potential leaks. That way you've covered all your bases. Go ahead and fix that unit up, get it recharged, and get it back up and running for your customer. So that is my leak checking procedure. If you make it yours, I guarantee you'll have some success. Happy HVACing.